Cheesecake is one of those desserts with a seemingly endless amount of variations, but there's one true classic to rule them all, and that is the classic New York cheesecake. Today, I'll be showing you how to make a cheesecake that is better than what you can buy at any store and even most restaurants. And the best part is, you don't need to deal with the hassle of using a water bath. Before we get started, all ingredient amounts in this video are going to be for a 9 inch pan, but in the description I'll include amounts for 10 inch and 8 inch pans as well. Alright with that out of the way, let's get started with our graham cracker crust. Grab 3 8 packs of graham crackers and then crush them up a little bit before emptying them into a zip seal bag. Remove all of the air from the bag and then grab a rolling pin and crush the graham crackers into a fine dust. If you have a food processor, I highly recommend you use it for this step. The finer you can get the crumbs, the better. The graham cracker crust should be as fine as sand on the beach. To the bowl of graham crackers, add in 125 grams of melted and unsalted butter, 20 grams of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, 15 grams of all-purpose flour to give the crust a little more structure, and then mix all of the ingredients together until the melted butter is well distributed throughout the mixture. And just like wet sand on the beach, the crust should hold its shape when you squeeze it with your hand. If it just crumbles right away, add in a little extra butter. Line a 9 inch springform pan with a sheet of parchment paper and then add in 60% of the graham cracker crust. Then use a glass, or in my case a martini shaker, to work the crumbs all the way to the outer edge of the pan. Once you have a rough ring of crumbs formed along the outside, use the glass to press it firmly into the side of the pan. As you do this, the crust is going to work its way further and further up the sides of the pan, and as it reaches the top, Use your thumb to press down on top of the crust so it forms one even layer. When a solid ring of crust is formed along the outside, add in the remaining 40% of the crumb mixture. Spread the crumbs out evenly along the bottom of the pan, and then use the bottom of the glass to compact the crumbs to form one smooth and even layer. When your crust is looking like an absolute masterpiece, Place it onto the center rack of an oven that has been preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake it for 8 minutes. And after 8 minutes, remove the crust from the oven and allow it to cool down completely to room temperature before using. While waiting for the crust to cool down, it is a good time to start making the cheesecake custard. So in a mixing bowl, add in 4 8 ounce blocks or 900 grams of softened room temperature cream cheese. And don't think about using anything else other than Philadelphia cream cheese. After the cream cheese, add in 280 grams of sugar. In hindsight, I wish I had added in the flour in now, but I'll tell you more on exactly why that is later. Use a silicone spatula to cream the cream cheese and sugar together until they are as smooth as velvet and lump free. Then add in 4 large room temperature eggs plus 1 egg yolk. Add in one egg at a time and then mix until fully incorporated before adding in the next egg. And now that there are egg whites in the bowl, we need to be careful about overmixing because overmixing can trap air inside our custard. Any air that gets trapped inside the custard will ruin the smooth and creamy texture that we're going for. After all of the eggs are mixed in, add in 240 grams of sour cream, 160 grams of heavy cream, 30 grams of all-purpose flour that I should have added in earlier, 5 grams of salt, 1 tablespoon of vanilla extract, and the zest from one lemon. The lemon zest is optional, but it'll add a nice citrus note that will really brighten the whole flavor of the cheesecake. If you're striving for perfection, you can go over the lemon zest with a knife so it doesn't stand out texturally. Gently mix all of the ingredients together until everything is well combined. We want to minimize the amount of air we incorporate into the custard. So hopefully now you can get a better idea as to why I wish I added in the flour during the creaming stage. As you can see it takes a lot of whisking to work out the small lumps of flour and the more I whisk, the more air I'm going to trap inside the custard. When the cheesecake custard is homogeneous and smooth as silk, it is ready to be transferred into the prepared graham cracker crust. 
When all of the custard is in the pan, give it a few taps so any air bubbles rise to the surface. And then you can shimmy it a little bit so that the custard will level out. Then use a toothpick or a kitchen torch to pop any bubbles that rise to the surface. And it would probably be a good idea to already have the cheesecake pan on a baking tray before you add in the custard. Place the cheesecake onto the center rack of an oven that has been preheated to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and bake it for about 65 to 70 minutes. If you're wondering about a water bath, I wouldn't recommend it. Every time I've used a water bath, my cheesecake cracked and my crust had gotten soaked with water even though I wrapped the pan in foil. This is the cheesecake at 60 minutes. As you can see, it's still very jiggly in the middle and it needs more time. So this is the cheesecake after about 70 minutes. It's still a little jiggly in the center, and you can see a souffle effect on the outer edge. And if the cheesecake starts to crack along the outer perimeter, you can be certain that it is done. And don't be alarmed if you see any cracks. Everything will be fine as long as you catch them early enough. When the cheesecake is done, turn off the oven and allow it to cool inside the oven with the door closed for 2-3 to three hours. While the cheesecake cools down in the oven, we can make a delicious strawberry sauce to go along with it. To make the strawberry sauce, place a sauce pot over medium heat and add in 450 grams of strawberries, 48 grams of sugar, and 30 milliliters of water. Give everything a quick stir so the sugar can help draw out the natural water that's inside the strawberries. Once the strawberries have reached a simmer, reduce the heat to low and continue simmering for another 8 to 10 minutes, stirring occasionally. After 8 to 10 minutes of simmering, the strawberries will have softened greatly, and before you turn off the heat, add in a cornstarch slurry made up of 3 grams of cornstarch mixed with 30 milliliters of water. Once the strawberries have returned to a simmer, the cornstarch will have gelatinized, at which point you can turn off the heat and add in the juice from a quarter of a lemon. Adding in the juice at the end of the cooking process will help maintain its fresh flavor. And lastly, puree the strawberries using a blender. I'm using an immersion blender, but you can do this step just fine in a normal countertop blender. The finished sauce should be thick enough to coat the back of a spoon, and it's going to continue thickening even more as it cools. Once the sauce has had a chance to cool down a little bit, transfer it into a container and place it to chill in the fridge overnight. After 3 hours of cooling down in the oven, the cheesecake is looking gorgeous and crack free. Well at least in the center that is, but you can barely even tell that the cracks along the edges are even there. Large temperature swings is what causes cheesecakes to crack and that's why we allowed it to cool down in a warm oven. Cover the finished cheesecake and then place it to chill in the fridge for a minimum of 10 hours. Now it's the next day and I thought I might have needed one of these little spatulas to help release the cheesecake from the side, but luckily I had no crust sticking to the pan whatsoever. Be gentle when handling the cheesecake because we don't want to destroy that beautiful crust we worked so hard on. To get clean slices, you'll need a tall glass or a heat safe container. Fill up the container with hot water and then dip in the knife for a few seconds before each slice. Wipe the knife down with a towel, and then with the hot knife you'll be able to cut through the cheesecake like it's butter. I'm cutting the cheesecake into 8 for video purposes, but you can easily get 10 to 12 servings from a 9 inch cheesecake. The cheesecake is firm, yet still creamy and decadent, and the lemon zest really does help make the cheesecake taste lighter. There's just the right amount of sugar, so you're still able to taste some of the tanginess from the cream cheese, and let's not forget about how amazing that double crust looks. Strawberry sauce is totally worth making, and it is the perfect thing to pair with any cheesecake. New York cheesecake is one of the world's greatest desserts, and it's extremely easy to make. So the next time you're having a special occasion or just want a little bite of heaven, surprise your friends and family with this incredible New York cheesecake. <laughs>